Uh, let me start uh, talking about, for a minute, uh, Genesis 12. Now, here's, in Genesis 12, now I'm paraphrasing. I'm paraphrasing. In Genesis 12, God says to Abraham, Abraham. Abraham says, yes, Lord. God says, I want to bless you profoundly. Abraham says, that's great. And God says, yeah, but I'm going to bless you that you may be a blessing to all the nations on the face of the earth. Therefore, God says, and I quote, get out. Get out of your homeland. I'm sending you. Uh, get out of your safety zone. Get out of your comfort zone. Go. Get out. And Hebrews 11 describes it so perfectly. Hebrews 11 says, and God said to Abraham, get out. So he went out, not knowing whither he went. <laughs> or in the modern translations, and so Abraham went out having no idea where he was going. But because he was willing to uh, get out of his comfort zone, God used him, obviously. The rest is history. Now, that's not just Abraham. I'd like you to see that that's the way the gospel works. Because centuries later, a greater than Abraham left the ultimate land, the ultimate safe zone, the ultimate comfort zone, Jesus Christ, and he was sent into the world, and he did know where he was going. He was going to his death. And he went to his death on the cross for us, but he saved our souls, and he won our hearts, and he... He was raised from the dead and he ascended to heaven and there's the gospel. What is the gospel? The way up is to go down. The way to be rich is to give it away. The way to be incredibly happy is to stop thinking about your happiness and just think about the happiness of others. Gospel. Now I started like that uh, because the two announcements I'm about to tell you are Yes, they are program kind of announcements. They're administrative announcements. They shouldn't be a surprise if you've been listening over the last few years. And yet, I want you to see that the motivation for them is, is, is the gospel. That's basically living out the gospel. The first one is this. The time has come for the one single redeemer who meets at several sites. We have one church that meets at several locations to become three congregations. Uh, three full-fledged congregations, as it were, east side, west side, downtown, each with their own elder board, each with their own staff, pastors, lay leaders, and each with its own senior pastor. And the three redeemers are going to be far better than the old centralized single redeemer in at least three areas, probably more, but at least three. One is they will be better at reaching their neighborhoods. Number two, they'll be better at raising up new leaders. And number three, they'll be far better at starting new churches all over Center City, New York. And see, that's the main point. These three churches are going to become church planting engines, which basically are going to do the Abraham thing or the gospel thing. We're going to be sending people out. That's why you're sending people out in the next five weeks to Lincoln Square. And this is, yeah, it's the gospel, but it's also the plan. Do you know 20 years ago, 1997, we actually sent uh, literature to all, everyone at Redeemer, and the leader said, we do not want Redeemer to end up as just a single mega church. We want to become a family of churches that meets throughout the, all through the neighborhoods of the city. And the first step that we took, and it was a biggish step too, was in 1980, 1998, 18 years ago basically, maybe, or 1999 I guess it was, 18 years ago, uh, we were all meeting over in Hunter College on the east side and we sent some people over here to start doing worship on the west side on Sundays. And that was hard because we were saying goodbye to people, we were sending people out. But if we hadn't done that, you wouldn't be here. This wouldn't be here. And then, of course, five years ago, people from this congregation and the Eastside Church, 700 or more, went downtown to start the downtown church. And you know today, only five years later, they're, well, give it another couple of years, they're going to be almost double that number. And see, that's, you see the, how the way up is down? The way to become rich is to give away? It was the way God works, and has always worked, and the way he's working here in the city. He reaches out, not when you hold on and stay in, but when you're really willing to give away and to be sent out. Out of your comfort zone, but to be sent out. And that's how God works. And the RISE campaign, which is what 
uh, which is a, a, an incredibly ambitious mission program for the city. Uh, the RISE campaign is a vision that in the next 10 years, we would triple the number of churches and Christians in Center City, New York. And, uh, and that means we're all going to be sent out. Now, but that includes me. May 20th, we're going to have a congregational meeting. Saturday night, please circle it. If you're a member, we really need you to be there. Everybody's invited, but if you're a member, please be there. Uh, May 20th. We're going to do two things. The one is we are going to vote and we're going to become three congregations out of the one. The second thing we're going to do is we're going to recognize that I'm stepping out as the senior pastor of Redeemer. So you'll get three new senior pastors. I'm stepping out. I will no longer be your senior pastor. And I will no longer be your Sunday preacher. I'm planning on doing that as of July 1. And that means I preach my regular uh, 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 you know, schedule through the end of June. And that's where I'd make that change. Now, let me be real clear about what that means. Kathy and I are not going anywhere. Uh, New York is our home, and you are our people. And we're not leaving the New York or the Fellowship of Redeemer. I'm becoming a teacher trainer. You say, what do you mean? Well, <clears throat> the main problem with starting all these churches, even more than money, and by the way, we need the money, and therefore, thank you so much for being so strategic with the RISE campaign. Thank you for being so generous. And yet, even more than money, the main thing we need is leaders. We don't have the leaders. There's gonna to have to be a dramatic increase in church leaders in this city if we're going to start all these churches. A year ago, we started a whole series of new leadership training initiatives. We started a full-fledged Master of Arts theology degree that we're offering here. We're going to be starting all kinds of other practical training programs and internships and residences. It's already started. There's already people in the program in the sequence, and I'm going to step into that as a full-time teacher, trainer, mentor. I will not be the senior pastor. I will not be your Sunday preacher. I'll be a teacher, trainer, mentor, full-time. But that also means I can do some things for Redeemer that I haven't been able to do for a long time. I'm not leaving New York. I'm not leaving your fellowship. So, for example, some of you, and I, I, you know, I see some of you have been around a while. I know some of you have been around a while. You might remember years ago, I used to be able to do re conferences in the city, weekend conferences, seminars, uh, the gospel in life, the gospel in the heart, gospel in the community. I used to be able to do uh, uh, weekend retreats here in the city, conferences, for people who just wanted to go down deeper into certain subjects, for people of Redeemer. I haven't been able to do that in years. I'm going to do one this fall for you on, on how do you really get the gospel into your life in such a way that it really changes. We talk about it. How does it actually work? I'm going to do a conference for you this week, this, this fall. I haven't been able to do that in years. Also, some of you, if you're really, really old, I mean, if you're really old like me, you might remember the time years ago when I would be speaking in the middle of the week, in the middle of the city, every week, and if you wanted to bring friends who didn't go to church, if you wanted to bring friends who maybe didn't believe and engage them with the gospel, you could do that. I haven't been able to do that in years, but I will start doing that too. So in some ways, though I'm leaving and I'm being sent out into the whole city for the city, I'll still be here. I mean, this is our town. We raised our kids here. We raised our grandchildren here. We're raising our grandchildren here. One of them ran out the door at the five o'clock service happily, you know, uh, that's my granddaughter. And we're not going anywhere. Kathy and I actually have no, uh, by the way, plans to ever not live here or even to not, we don't even have plans to be away in a, on a, you know, from New York City in a year more than we are right now. Um, it's amazing how God could send me and yet at the same time, I'm still with you. He's always so brilliant about things like that. But here's the last thing to say. I'm, in a sense, I'm handing off Redeemer to three senior pastors, not one. To David, to John, to Abe. Is that the right direction? Or is it David, John? I don't know. To David, to John, and Abe. And look, they're already fully functioning in their job, as you know. And they're already uh, operating at the highest level of capability, or I wouldn't be able to be sent out. But I want you to all, now look at me. You're saying this is a pretty long 
I know some of you are saying, this is a pretty long announcement and I already knew all this. Okay, now look at me. <laughs> go read Hebrews 13, 17. I'm not going to read it to you. You go find it. And you will see, to a great degree, the difference between a good leader and a great leader lies with you. If you want these really good leaders to become great leaders, all you have to do is give them all the prayer and all the love you gave me over the years. And by the way, that's saying a lot. Okay? I actually don't know of anybody, and I have a lot of friends who are in the ministry, I don't know of anybody who prayed for and loved as much as I have been. You give that to these leaders, you're going to have great leaders. So to a great degree, the difference between a good and a great leader, the key to that lies in your hot little hands. Redeemer, yes, Lord. <laughs> I want to bless you. Great. Now get out. <laughs> get out of your comfort zone. And you know, we're all, aren't we? You know, maybe we should say, Lord, you know what? We're going to go. We're going to go. But we're, frankly, you're sending us into territory we've never been. Redeemer's never been where you're sending us. And I think his answer would be, remember the Great Commission? where Jesus Christ said, go into all the worlds and make disciples, and lo, I'll be with you even to the end of the age. See, there's your answer. When God sends you out, he says, give away, get out of your comfort zone, but the more you give away in his name for the sake of the gospel, the more you'll have of him. That's what we can look forward to. So now we're gonna have the word of God being read and then we're gonna have the word of God preached to you and continue with our service.